Pa za Severnu Makedoniju. Ne znam, razgovarao sam jutro sa Dimitrom Kovačevskim telefonom i naravno se, ali nisam siguran. Nisam uvijek. Da vam je pohvatilo Nama nama su to uradili sa Prištine, tako da mi smo dobili poglavlje 35. Ja ne mogu da kažem da je gospodin Kovačovski srećen, ali sad vidjet ćemo šta će vidjeti. Ne mislim da je to rečenje. A čega da se uploši? Prošla su vremena u kojima slobodne i nezavisne države neko može da ucenjuje ili pritiska. Mi smo ovdje došli kod prijatelja, verujemo u evropsku budućnost i Srbije i regiona, ali ćemo se zajedno sa našim prijateljima iz regiona boriti za tu evropsku budućnost, ali poštujući sebe. Poštujući sebe i verujući da zajednički možemo mnogo toga da uradimo. A to da smo uplašeni i mi smo mnogo mali, a neki su mnogo veliki, to ostavite za nekog drugog, to su priče za malo decu. I davno su prošla ta vremena. Srećan radom želim... Je li Makedonija uplašena? Makedonija je nama, severna Makedonija je za nas bratska i prijateljska zemlja. I sve što osjećate vi u Skoplju, u severnoj Makedoniji, kao da osjećamo i mi u Beogradu. Mi ništa od vas niti očekujemo, niti tražimo, samo želimo da ubrzano razvijamo naše prijateljske i bratske odnose i verujem da ćemo uvek i na evropskom putu i na svim drugim putima biti zajedno. Hvala vam, srećan rad. Zašto šapće? Uvek da se gašće. We were discussing the issue of North Macedonia and Bulgaria. That was the reason, and uh, some of the EU countries wanted to block an opening negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania. That was the reason that we were discussing it. But we are here, and we are here to discuss our European future. And there to say that we believe that there would be some good conclusions for the Western Balkans and. Uh, Well, if it happens, it's good. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. We are anyway profoundly grateful to the European Union for investing into our countries, donating huge amounts of money, and then we'll do our best to take care of ourselves. We have already voted. We have already voted against incursion in Ukraine in the United Nations General Assembly. And uh, we do support territorial integrity of Ukraine, as we do support territorial integrity of Serbia, which is not the case with many EU member states. It's a very complicated issue, and uh, I have no doubts that we're going to discuss it today. Thanks a lot. I cannot say that, but uh, maybe in this way. We do respect ourselves. At least we think that we do respect ourselves a bit more than some others. Thanks a lot. Mi smo uvek, mi smo uvek za napredak svih balkanskih zemalja na evropskom putu. Hvala. Može li da se dogodi ili ne, ne očekujem ništa posebno. Svakako smo zahvalni Evropskoj uniji i članicama Evropskoj unije na podršci, na pomoći, na investicijama. To je ono što je za nas važno, tako da... Očekujete li kritika dvog nesljeđenja sankcije Rusije? Očekivao, ne očekivao, dobit će odgovor. Kako gledate na izjave našeg predsjednika države koji kaže premijer da Srbija više ne može sljediti na dvije stolice? Srbija sjede na svojoj stolici. 
i nisu vaš premijer i vaš predsednik ti koji će da vode politiku Srbije, već građani Srbije preko svog rukovodstva. Ali im ja čestitam na tome što bi mnogo želili da vode politiku Srbije. Dobro je to, pokazuje kakav je značaj Srbije i želim im sve najbolje. Gospodin Šolci zadnji put kada je bio u Beogradu rekao da očekuje da Srbija prizna poslovu. Ja sam njemu rekao da mi to ne očekujemo. Srećem razliku. Unë jo kam thënë edhe po e përsërisë për kunder 
оптимизмит ngutur të disave edhe këtu në Bruxelles nuk pres të zgjidhet asgjë në Bulgari, po ndërkohë sigurisht që nëse do të zgjidhet do të jetë një motiv për të marrë frym të letësuar nga kjo pengmari e një vëndit natos të dy vëndeve të natos në kulmin e një lufte të nëzet në kufit e Europës dhe në nëvështrimin e 26 vëndeve tjera që shojnë si yjet që rinë dhe vështrojnë në atë romanin e famë shumë të aqë që bëjtë kërënjë. Do flasim, do flasim më vonë kur të kemi konferenësën për shtypë. Oh, first of all, it's a disgrace that a NATO country, Bulgaria, kidnaps two other NATO countries, namely Albania and North Macedonia, in the midst of the hot war at the Europe's backyard, with 26 other countries sitting still in a scary show of impotence. Are you not afraid that you are going to be a victim of the same bilateral Victim? Process? No. We will never be a victim because uh, we simply uh, know from long time that in this uh, path there is one Bulgaria here, one Bulgaria there, and uh, in the same time uh, we don't change our course and uh, what we need to do is to continue building Europe in our home. It's time for more regional cooperation. Open Balkans is the is the uh, real uh, answer in a situation while uh, the path of uh, integration will keep going, of course, uh, because there is no other alternative. But uh, a, a, a European spirit should be built in our region, so we don't need uh, the region to fall behind and to fall back. We'll to enter the, the Open Balkans. Say it again. Open Balkans is open for everyone. We are in the front seat because uh, everyone has to drive uh, its own uh, car in this case and uh, Albania is doing its part, it's doing its job, it's doing its reforms. It will continue to do so not because Brussels is asking, but because this is what our children are asking for us, from us. North Macedonia is candidate since 17 years, if I have not lost the count. Albania since eight. So uh, welcome uh, to Ukraine. It's a good thing to give candidate status, but I hope the Ukrainian people will not make many illusions about it. Thank you. You are a mess, guys. You are a big mess, and you are a disgrace. And uh, I think it's a shame that a NATO country kidnaps two other NATO countries while the in the backyard of Europe there is a hot war and of course uh, it's not good to see that 26 other countries sit still uh, in a scary show of impotence. Do you expect good, uh, good news today? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I prefer to not expect good news because uh, as I said yesterday some optimism was raised here but here we are. It's a new day in Europe but not in Bulgaria. Okay, thank you so
européenne accepte bilatéraliser le processus de négociation de la principale du Nord Je pourrais passer un petit peu contre eux et un, un précédent dangereux pour le prochain candidat, notamment l'Ukraine. Non, je pense pas. Je pense que bon, il faut garder notre calme dans une situation euh, qui est quand même une situation importante pour l'instant. Euh, la discussion par rapport à l'Ukraine est importante. C'est par rapport à, à un moment très très historique. Dans un moment historique, je pense qu'il faut donner un signal, un signal fort par rapport à l'Ukraine. Euh, C'est ce qu'on attend de nous maintenant, de montrer beaucoup d'unité entre les pays européens, de montrer que ceux qui sont en train de mener la guerre, en fait, pour nos valeurs, pour euh, les valeurs européennes qu'on leur supporte. Et donc je pense que c'est ça les signaux qu'on donne à l'Ukraine euh, aujourd'hui. Et je pense que ça ne veut pas dire que euh, la session à l'Europe se fait rapidement. Ça prendra beaucoup de temps. Mais le signal qu'on donne maintenant, c'est un signal important. Goedemorgen. Wat de tijd geleden ondenkbaar was, gaat nu toch gebeuren. Oekraïne krijgt de status van kandidaat lid. This is a decisive moment uh, for the European Union. It's also a geopolitical choice that we will make today. And I'm confident that today we will grant the candidate status to uh, uh, Ukraine and to uh, Moldova and express a clear and strong perspective for European perspective for Ukraine, Georgia and, uh, and Moldova. We have also this morning an important meeting with the leaders of the Western Balkans. Important moment because there is a very strong political will to re-energize the process with the Western Balkans to send a very clear and strong message. And of course, at the time being, there are still uh, discussions in Bulgaria. We will follow closely the situation. We are involved with the French rotating presidency in order to put uh, proposals on the table, in order to be able, as soon as possible, to start the negotiations with Albania and with North Macedonia. It's a top priority for us, and we will do everything to achieve a, a, an outcome on that important uh, topic. We want also to make sure that uh, all the efforts made regarding Bosnia and Herzegovina will have a positive effect for diffusing the political tensions uh, in the country and for making sure that uh, the institutions uh, are, are working in the, in the country. Ce Conseil européen est un moment historique sur le plan géopolitique et c'est un choix qui doit être fait aujourd'hui, qui va engager le futur de l'Union européenne, notre stabilité, notre sécurité, notre prospérité. Les Balkans occidentaux sont une priorité pour nous. Nous allons être engagés pour remettre de l'énergie dans ce processus politique avec les leaders des Balkans occidentaux. Et puis il y a cette décision qui est extrêmement importante pour l'avenir, la perspective européenne de l'Ukraine, de la Moldavie et de la Georgie va, je le crois, être affirmée aujourd'hui. Et le statut de candidat, je le crois aussi, je suis confiant, pourra être accordé à l'Ukraine et à la Moldavie. Je vous remercie.
of the enlargement of the European Union. And I'm particularly pleased as a long-standing advocate uh, for uh, Ukraine's application to, to candidate status to become members of the European Union. It's very significant for Ukraine, it's very significant for Moldova, uh, and indeed Georgia in terms of the European perspective. Uh, and we in Ireland know what the European Union means, being a member of the European Union. It's the 50th anniversary of Ireland's decision to join the European Union probably the single most transformative decision and event that happened in modern Irish history. Uh, and so I've always uh, uh, cannot comprehend how we could ever uh, refuse accession to other member states because we know that membership itself can be transformative, uh, can spur on reforms, can spur on economic development. And notwithstanding that Ukraine is going through a terrible, terrible, inhumane war, their cities and towns have been levelled, their people have been terrorised, uh, the, the greatest humanitarian crisis since World War II. And I think today the European Union is sending a message of solidarity to the people of Ukraine, that you belong to the European family, you belong to the European Union, uh, and the decision will be taken today to facilitate uh, your application uh, and you will have candidate status to, to join the European Union along with Moldova uh, and over time and uh, with, with, with Georgia. In the context of the Western Balkans, we dearly hope that progress can be made uh, in respect of the Western Balkans, particularly North Macedonia and Albania. There are issues and there are challenges there. But again, uh, our position has always been one of...
Heute Morgen haben wir eine sehr wichtige Diskussion mit den Staaten des westlichen Balkans. Sehr wichtig deshalb, weil seit fast 20 Jahren die Staaten und die Bürgerinnen und Bürger der Staaten des westlichen Balkans auf die Möglichkeit warten, Mitglied der Europäischen Union zu werden. Aus meiner Sicht ist es von allergrößter Bedeutung, dass das jetzt ein glaubwürdiges Versprechen wird, weil die vielen Bemühungen, die in diesen Staaten unternommen worden sind, ja auch tatsächlich in einem Beitritt münden müssen. Und deshalb wird Deutschland sich verantwortlich fühlen, dafür Sorge zu tragen, dass diese Staaten eine Möglichkeit haben, auch tatsächlich ihre europäische Perspektive erfolgreich umzusetzen. Wir sehen, wie viele Bemühungen viele unternommen haben. Ich will nur erwähnen, Nordmazedonien hat seinen Namen geändert, um es möglich zu machen, Mitglied der Europäischen Union zu werden. Das ist nur ein Beispiel für viele Anstrengungen und die müssen jetzt alle auch sinnvoll umgesetzt werden in eine Mitgliedschaft. Einige Mitgliedstaaten äh, haben, äh, einige Westbalkanstaaten haben das Gebot, die Gebot, heute zu boykottieren. Ist das eine gute Ausgangsbasis für die Gespräche? Das ist doch klar, dass wir 2003 das Versprechen bekommen hat, Mitglied der Europäischen Union zu werden und damals wahrscheinlich gehofft hat, dass das in einem Zeitraum von fünf bis zehn Jahren der Fall sein wird, nach allmählich 20 Jahren bald im nächsten Jahr das Gefühl hat, dass hier mal ein entscheidender Schritt vorwärts passieren muss. Und Deutschland wird die Aktivitäten der westlichen Balkanstaaten unterstützen bei ihrem Weg in die Europäische Union. Wir fühlen uns verantwortlich dafür, dass diese Länder Erfolg haben mit ihren Bemühungen. So the most important question is that we all work together and the, that the states from the Western Balkans will have a good opportunity to become really members of the European Union. They worked so hard, so it is our common task to make this something that will happen. Thank you. Εννέα ακριβώ χρόνια στην Σύνοδο Πολιτή τη Θεσσαλονίκη είχε ανοίξει ο δρόμο για την είσοδο των Δυτικών Βαλκανίων στην Ευρωπαϊκή Οικογένεια. Δυστυχώ από τότε η πρόοδο η οποία έχει σημειωθεί πρακτικά είναι ελάχιστη. Και καταλαβαίνω απόλυτα γιατί στι χώρε των Δυτικών Βαλκανίων υπάρχει μια σχετική δυσπιστία γύρω από τι προθέσει τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση πραγματικά να εντάξει στην Ευρωπαϊκή Οικογένεια τι χώρε των Δυτικών Βαλκανίων. Είναι μια ευκαιρία να επανεκκινήσουμε αυτήν την διαδικασία με ακόμα μια. Απαραίτητη προπόθεση για να συμβεί αυτό. 
Έλθει επιτέλου η Ιαπωνία μεταξύ Σόφια και Σκοπίων, έτσι ώστε να ξεκινήσουν και επίσημα οι διαπραγματεύσει μεταξύ Βόρεια Μακεδονία και Αλβανία σχετικά με την ενταξιακή τη διαδικασία. Η Ελλάδα σύγκεται στο πλευρό των δυτικών Βαλκανίων, ω η μεγαλύτερη οικονομία τη περιοχή, ω μια χώρα η οποία έχει καρποθεί τα ωφέλη από την είσοδο στην Ευρωπαϊκή Οικογένεια, θα στηρίξει τα Δυτικά Βαλκάνια στην προσπάθειά του να γίνουν και αυτά μέλη τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση. Γνωρίζουμε ότι για τα κράτη αυτά η διαδικασία αυτή είναι δύσκολη. Υπάρχουν συγκεκριμένε προποθέσει οι οποίε πρέπει να τηρηθούν και αυτό είναι κάτι το οποίο τα κράτη των δυτικών Βαλκανίων πρέπει να γνωρίζουν. Όμω η άποψή μου είναι ότι είναι πολύ σημαντικό να δοθεί ένα συγκεκριμένο χρονικό ορόσημο προκειμένου αυτή η διαδικασία να έχει ολοκληρωθεί. Η πρότασή μου προ το Ευρωπαϊκό Συμβούλιο είναι αυτό το ορόσημο να είναι το 2033, 30 χρόνια δηλαδή μετά τη σύνοδο τη Θεσσαλονίκη, έτσι ώστε τα Δυτικά Βαλκάνια, οι πολίτε του να γνωρίζουν ότι στο τέλο αυτή τη μακρά διαδικασία μπορούν πραγματικά να προσβλέπουν ότι θα γίνουν μέλη τη Ευρωπαϊκή Οικογένεια. Η Ελλάδα θα σταθεί στο πλευρό των κρατών αυτών σε αυτή τη δύσκολη προσπάθεια σε, αυτό, σε αυτή τη μακρά διαδρομή στην οποία ήδη πορεύονται.